Hey everybody, this is Eric Worre and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here in Park City, Utah with my good friend Paul Zane Pilzer. Paul, how are you? Great. Um, Paul invited us to his home, magnis magnificent, interesting home up here in the mountains. And we just finished an interview uh, for the network marketing documentary that's coming out uh, the end of this November. And Paul's actually going to be at the event speaking as well. He's going to be just coming off a, a tour in China. And um, Paul is a entrepreneur. He is a college professor. He is uh, an author of 11 best-selling books. Uh, my, the first book that I read uh, that, that changed my thinking on distribution and how network marketing fit in the world was a book called Unlimited Wealth. I'd still recommend you get that book today. He's working on a book now called The Sharing Eco Economy. The Sharing Revolution. The Sharing Revolution, uh, which is going to be coming out next year, hopefully, and doing a lot of research on that. Um, and uh, he's also an entrepreneur, a very successful entrepreneur. He sold a company last year for, what, 400 and... 435? 435 million. It was, it was in the middle of an IPO. One of our customers bought the whole company. 435 million. So Paul's doing okay uh, financially. He's spoken and been an advocate for the network marketing profession for a long time. Um, uh, so first of all, thank you for, for agreeing to do the documentary. Thank you for saying hi to this community. Just so you know, this community is about a half a million people around the world in hundreds and hundreds of network marketing companies and uh, over 100 com uh, countries that watch this on a daily basis. So I want to just turn the camera on and have you say hello to them, but also share with me or share with them what you sh shared with me about the value of network marketing, what's happening in the economy today, and what you see moving forward in the future. The world economy led by the U.S. economy is in great shape. Our gross domestic product is going up every quarter by substantial numbers for the last few years. And I'm predicting far greater economic growth in our actual output, what we produce. Amazingly, at the same time, unemployment is skyrocketing. What we're seeing is the real growth is the growth per employed person in gross domestic product. An example I use in my work would be, let's go visit Pilsers Island, where 10 people fish with a fishing line. And they go out every day and they barely catch enough fish with their line for each fisherman to feed their wife and their kids. And all of a sudden, new technology shows up, a missionary with a net. Now two fishermen with the net, one to pilot the boat, one to throw the net, can catch all the fish that 10 used to with the lines. That's a 500% increase in productivity. The island's still got the same amount of fish, but it's got 80% unemployment. And of course, the challenge is, how do we quickly get that 80%, the eight fishermen who no longer are needed to fish, to do something else? And the problem is each job they should do doesn't exist yet. One becomes a teacher. They never knew you could hire a teacher. They thought you have to teach your own kids. One becomes a doctor. He takes care of sick. I thought you only take care of your own kids when they're sick. One becomes a roofer. They don't just fix the roof. He becomes a specialist at learning how to keep their huts from leaking. All of a sudden, the economy grows a major amount, 500% with roofing, with, with teaching, with medicine on top of the fish. But notice none of those jobs existed until the unemployment occurred, the 80% unemployment from the net. And that's where we are in the world today. Let me ask you a question on the unemployment. You say unemployment skyrocketing, but the reports, if you look on the news, they say unemployment's going down. Well, that's because we changed the definition a few years ago of unemployment. In the United States, if you haven't found a job for six months, we don't count you as looking. We say you're no longer on the unemployment rolls. So we really have, in the order of 30% by my numbers, of the U.S. population under, unemployed or underemployed. Doing some, token, doing some token job. And that's just looking at the people who are out there producing value and going to work. And you see it all the time. You know, look at the government's number of 7% unemployment because they're only counting the ones who are less than six Getting months benefits. unemployed, right? And if you look close at that, you go, it doesn't fit my reality. Take a list of, take, your, you know, take the, I like to take the list of the 24 little homes in the block I grew up on. Where are they now? And who's unemployed at 50 years old? Or do the unemployed list of your relatives, of your cousins, of take some body of population not based on where they work and look who's unemployed and you'll see 30% of the people in your life would love a job, would be working, but aren't finding or something. Or would love a better job. Absolutely. Maybe they're working part-time somewhere. Not what they would call fully employed or utilized. Yeah. And then what we see is that those who are employed are making more money than ever before. We see that right now when you go to book an airline seat and they're all filled up. 
at prices 40, 50 percent above five years ago. We see that whenever you want to go to a certain restaurant or buy the newest car, they're all producing them, but you have to wait for it. So those who are doing well are doing better and better than ever before, and they're about 50, 60 percent of our economy. The challenge and crisis is what are we going to do worldwide with the people who are laid off because we no longer need vinyl records or digital CDs or CD-ROMs or all these new things as technology keeps changing, and we find better ways to do things more efficiently. Or Uber is so much better way of getting somewhere in a town than using a taxi, but someone's got to go retrain the taxi driver how to own his own car, take it clean, and become an Uber entrepreneur. Or the Airbnb is a certainly much, much better way to go stay in a city than some horrible hotel room where you got to wait in line and check in and you don't know who you're asking and everyone's trying to sell you something at every time and a cup of coffee is $8 than staying with some friend of yours. In fact, one of my employees just recently, I asked who uses Airbnb? Girl raised her hand. I said, how do you use it? She said, I rent out the couch in my studio apartment. And I looked at this young girl and I said, you feel safe renting out a room, a one room apartment, studio, and you feel safe renting the couch? Yes, I only rent it to graduates of Oberlin College. I go, why Oberlin? Well, they like music, it's a great music school, and I went there, and when they tell me who they are, I check out on the web, I sign in as an Oberlin alum, and I see that they're really who they are. And then we usually have a lot in common because they're often from the same class. What a great world. I have a fascinating guest this weekend, and she pays for 110% of her rent by renting 10 days in a ski town, the couch in her studio apartment, to someone who went to college that she may or may not have known before. We see so many improvements in the world due to technology happening fast. But the scary thing is, what are we going to do with the unemployed? And that, of course, brings me to why I love network marketing so much. And love is really the right adjective here. Because only network marketing goes out there and says, your employment past doesn't determine your economic future. Only network marketing says, you convince me you really want this, I'll take the chance and hire you. But I wouldn't hire you as an employee coming up with the money in the forms and having to pay you whether you produce or not. I'm going to hire you, but you're only going to make money if you listen to me and we train you together and we work and can succeed. So only network marketing has the opportunity to offer opportunity to so many people who have fallen off, off track. And that is unemployment, particularly the unemployment caused by structural unemployment, that's changes in technology, is the greatest crisis facing the United States and the developed world today. Because eventually, when you hit 60, 70 percent unemployed, unemployed, you're in big trouble. Saudi Arabia has 90 percent unemployment because they pay people for not working and they import all their labor, and they become the hotbed for spawning so many bad activities and bad formats. We're right behind them unless we find ways to retrain people who are displaced by technology, and network marketing leads the way in making that happen. So tell me what you think about the future of network marketing. As, as we retrain these people, new skills, entrepreneurial skills, we teach people how to be entrepreneurs, take charge of their life, um, you know, run their own life, get away from that job if they want to, have that extra income, build a career. Um, what do you see as the future? Well, ultimately, the companies that succeed today in network marketing, while they think it's their product or something that's unique, what they're really succeeding at is intellectual distribution, distributing information about a product or service that will improve your life. Original network marketing was carrying goods, distributing when there wasn't UPS, there wasn't the post office, and you had to take them out of your trunk and lug product all over the place. Today, network marketing, virtually every network marketing company, is really about somebody teaching something else to someone, teaching a better method to someone, a better product, a better business way of doing business. And that is the strength of network marketing, and that's the bottleneck. As new technology comes up that would allow an Uber, an Airbnb, or so many things I'm studying in the sharing economy to exist, someone's got to teach the consumer how to use the new technology. And network marketing, while you think you're developing your wellness business, you're really developing your skill business at teaching other people new things. And that's going to be where the big money is. It already is in network marketing. That's going to be increasingly where there's more money in society because companies want to train you or teach you to go train people about their product. Nobody does that as well as the network marketing industry. Yeah, I agree with you. And what, one thing I would tell you that I learned from your book, Unlimited Wealth, way back in my early days in network marketing, is you talked about something in the book called the technology gap. The, the, the difference between where technology was in its inside of a company and where it could be. Where it could or individuals. Grow. The, the way in which you shave or drive to work and the better way you don't know about yet. And, and what little things sometimes stick in my brain and, and they change the way I think from then on. And from then on, 
I thought about everything that I did. Where was I on this skill, my personal skill, on finding people to talk to about my business? Where was I and where's the best? What's the best there is? What's the, the blue chip standard? And what, what steps do I need to take in order to get from where I am to where I, where I got? And every time I got to that next step, there was always something else. There was always a little growth. There was always somebody figured out a, a new way to be able to do it a little bit better, a little bit better. It's like climbing the mountains behind you as you climb each mountain peak. You see another higher peak, but you couldn't have seen it because yeah. the mountain was in your way. And then you get to the higher peak and there's another mountain in your way and you find there's always another higher mountain, a better way of doing something. But until you mastered the one you're challenged by, you didn't know there was another higher Well, way. instead of looking for the magic downline or the magic product or the magic compensation plan, I was looking for the magic me because of the technology gap idea in my head that you planted from your book that said, you had me go, okay, here's where I am on these, the seven skills of network marketing. Here's where I am in my own attitude. Uh, so talk about for a moment, just about the value of deciding to be a lifelong learner, the, the value of getting excited about a new idea um, and why network marketing rewards that so, so well and encourages that so well. Mm -hmm. You really, it's a, it's a question of faith. You, you go out to learn a better method. You master some area of a computer. You master some way of doing something. You learn a new network marketing technique to build your downline or communicate with people. And then you have faith to go, even though I just did all this and all the work, there's a better way out there. I'm going to have to ride and use what I just learned, but in three months or six months, I'm going to start again. Because there's always newer and better methods. And the people who succeed are the ones who adopt those the fastest. My quote back then in Unlimited Wealth was to the effect of prosperity belongs to people who learn things the fastest. In the old days, you were told, learn this job, learn this function, do this and this better. You can, I can hear my parents than everybody else. Wrong, because if you stay focused on one thing, doing it better, there's a new method that's so much better that the person who uses the technology grows the fastest. You know, you know what I found is interesting in network marketing? That the companies can focus on innovation but I don't need to focus too much on innovation. I actually need to focus, what, which is something much harder, I think, when it comes to a large group of people, is simplicity. That's the difference between being average and being exceptional, is how simple can I make it? How, how basic can I make it so it's doable for a brand new person and they can pass it on to the mm -hmm. next and they can pass it on to the next? So it's not really about necessarily massive innovation being radically creative. I need to be creative and clever and strategic in my mind of how can I get it simpler? How can I say it clearer? Well, that's the true genius. The highest, the, so the best nuclear physicist can explain physics much better than the normal high school teacher teaching physics, even though he's explaining it to a 10-year-old. And if you practice teaching, as you and I both have young children, practice teaching things to children in the 8 to 16-year-old range, that's when you learn how to, you really know it. You keep, I keep going back to the drawing board when my children ask me questions about economics or politics, and I go, oh, no, I really can't explain it yet. And I go back for hours to go get a five-minute explanation for them of something I thought I know. Only when you can teach it to a 12-year-old uh, do you really understand the subject. Well, Paul, I, I, uh, we talked, I, we've been taking up a good portion of the time today. We talked for probably an hour and a half on, on just the documentary itself. Uh, before we decided to do this real quick, but uh, I can't wait to see you in, in November uh, at the Mirage in Las Vegas. Can't wait for you to, to enlighten people on, um, on all of the research that you've done and the value that you can bring to that community. I want to thank you for what you've uh, contributed to my life and my career and my thinking and what you've done for millions of other people in the network marketing profession. So I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you very much. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, our wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to go pro, because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.